Hello everyone, Sula here. In today's presentation, I'm going to be talking about and comparing some lightweight telescope mounts made by iOptron. In January 2022, I bought an iOptron GEM28 mount. I was lured by the tantalizing iOptron ads proclaiming this telescope mount to have an incredible 2.8 mount weight to payload ratio. I made a couple of videos about the mount and now that I've had it for nearly a year, I'd like to give my final impressions about this mount and also a couple of other iOptron mounts. And so if you're considering buying a telescope mount, you might consider these. First of all, I had a lot of problems with this mount and I had to return it to iOptron three times. The worm gear stopped working and they had to be replaced. And when it came back, the top of the mount would slam into the knobs when it slewed and I had to return it again to adjust it. Then finally, after several months of returns, the mount is fully functional, but because of the issues I had previously with the mount, it left me with an unfavorable opinion. But now that I have had the mount and it's working, I've been able to use it pretty extensively, and I know that the problems were due to the defective worm gear, and now I feel better about this mount. It's very lightweight, weighing 10 pounds, exclusive of the counterweight, and it fits in a small Pelican case for safe transport, and it's easy to set up. The mount head has to be unlocked so as not to damage the gears when transporting, and then you have to attach it to the tripod with two screws, and these are the two screws and they give you a wrench to attach it that goes back here and has a magnet to keep it in place and then you just screw the two screws here but make sure they're centered otherwise you're not going to be able to move the alt as knobs when you're polar aligning and that's how you attach it and then once it's attached, then you can lock the RA and deck. But I found it to be somewhat fragile. You have to unlock the RA and deck locks before mounting it so as not to damage the fragile gears. And you have to screw two tiny screws into the top of the mount to secure it to the tripod. So far, I haven't lost the screws or the hex wrench that comes with it and is attached to the top of the mount in a slot with a magnet, but I do worry about that while putting it together in the dark. But my biggest complaint is that it cannot even come close to holding 28 pounds. Don't ever try to put 28 pounds on this mount because it will surely struggle to be accurate with that much weight about the most weight in my opinion that you should try to put on this would be 12 pounds maybe 15 pounds and that goes for visual use or astrophotography another irritating factor are these long locking levers for attaching your telescope to the saddle you have to be very careful to make sure that the levers are pointed um, sideways so that they don't slam into the mount while it's slewing causing it to come to a stop also, because they stick out so far, they slam into the side of my 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope when I'm attaching it to the saddle. And the levers have marred the side of my telescope as a result. This GEM28 came with a optical polar scope and it's easy to use for polar aligning. Just be careful not to touch it after that because it's so lightweight it can be e easily moved. The light that is supposed to light up the polar scope has never worked. And I told iOptron that, but they said that it was fine, but it doesn't work. So I had to attach my own little light to the side to illuminate the reticule when I'm polar aligning. And that's worked pretty well. On the positive side, now that it's uh, working, it is very quiet when it slews 
and it's very accurate in locating and tracking. I've used it for astrophotography and it performed very well as long as I didn't try to put too much weight on it. I was using an 80 millimeter refractor and I had good results with it and it's very portable and reliable now that it's been fixed. Also, iOptron did not charge me anything to fix it and their support is now much better and far more responsive than it was when I first bought this mount. But it's still a standard equatorial mount in the sense that you will need to attach at least one counterweight to it to balance your telescope. And actually, I think I need two to balance my 8-inch Meadschmidt cast grain to this mount. The tripod is lightweight, but it's sturdy enough, and the hand controller is easy to use, especially if you get the extra GPS receiver. And it has a decent database of over 200,000 objects, though I do wish that it had the SAO catalog of stars rather than the HIP Arcos catalog. Other than that, I like it. So I give the GEM28 mount four stars out of five. It doesn't get five stars because it cannot hold 28 pounds and because of the levers that I don't like and it scratched my Mead telescope. But I would recommend this. The price has actually gone down since I bought mine and it's now about 1300 US dollars. And the reason the price has come down is no doubt because iOptron is now offering an extensive line of strain wave mounts that do not require any counterweight at all. They cost significantly more though than an equatorial mount, including this GEM28. So if you want a lightweight mount, but you can't afford the almost double or more than double cost of a strain wave mount, then I would recommend the GEM28 mount. But if you can afford the exorbitant price of a strain wave mount, which is sure to come down as more and more companies offer their version of a strain wave mount, then getting a strain wave mount is probably the best way to get the lightest mount imaginable for a small to medium sized telescope, which are the only ones that I've tested and used personally. Since I'm very interested in keeping the weight down and because I'm no longer a spring chicken and because I frequently travel to dark sky sites with my telescope, I thought I would try out a strain wave mount. So I bought an iOptron HAE29 mount. The iOptron HAE29 EC strain wave telescope mount. It can be in AZ mode or equatorial mode. I have it in equatorial mode. And look how light it is, telescope and mount. They got rid of that horrible spring-loaded lever to tighten the saddle on the GEM28. I don't know how many times that damn thing has gotten hung up on the telescope when, mount when it turned. So they got rid of it and they have these two knobs there, so that's an improvement. Now we'll see if it performs like they claim. Oh, pretty. Okay, I have the new mount all set up and I have my Red Cat 51 on it with the mirrorless camera and I have it set to the zero position and it's pointed at Polaris as best as I can tell. And you just connect this cable to a USB port on your laptop and then you connect to the iOptron iPolar uh, software that you download. Okay, so the goal is to get that cross dead center of that big red circle. It zooms in when you're really close. So I'm pretty close. And so you just turn the alt as knobs a little bit when you're that close, not too much. Been fiddling with this stupid iPolar for 20 minutes. To me, that looks perfect, but it refuses to turn green. I don't understand. So, I'll just um, slew to something so you can hear how quiet it is, if you can hear it over this wind. And I'll have to uh, take my pictures on another, another night. So, we'll just go to a star.
pretty quiet. And I'm pleased to see that Ioptron has replaced these terrible long levers with knobs. They're plastic and they're kind of spiky and somewhat painful to turn, but at least they don't slam into your telescope. The HAE mount uses strain wave gear technology, allowing the mount to slew without the need for any counterweights. The HAE weighs just eight pounds, and Ioptron claims it can hold 29 pounds in payload. I would be nervous putting that much weight on an HAE mount, but I can't verify that the payload capacity is. I only put a 90 millimeter refractor on it to test it. One thing I absolutely hated it and it caused me to return the HA29 mount is that in order to keep the weight down, it no longer has a polar scope. You have to buy the iPolar electronic polar scope in order to polar line, unless you have SharpCat Pro or some other way to polar line. And that means you must have a laptop or iPad or similar to operate the iPolar electronic polar scope. I hated it. I got the red cross here directly over the green cross and it would never say I was polar aligned. After staring at a computer screen for over 30 minutes one night, I was so frustrated, I gave up and I just proceeded anyway. And it wasn't very accurate at all. I know some other people have reported on YouTube that this mount is very accurate but I didn't find it to be true. I wrote to Ioptron for advice to see if I was doing something wrong. And although their support is much, much better than it was two years ago, their answers were not helpful. They kept directing me to an owner's manual for a different model mount. And they kept telling me to try this and that, and none of their advice was helpful. None of their recommendations ever worked or allowed me to get the green for go on the polar alignment or improve the locating ability of the mount. The mount can be used in alt-as mode, so you don't even have to polar align, but you have to use a hex wrench to move the mount up to 90 degrees for alt-as use. I never even got to the point of trying the alt-as mode because I wanted to see how it did for astrophotography, but since it was so inaccurate, <laughs> for me anyway, the results were suboptimal. Finally, after three nights in a row of not being able to get it to polar line and having it very inaccurate, I asked Ioptron if I could return the HAE mount and at first they said they were going to charge me some like a 15% restocking fee, which I thought was outrageous. But in the end, they accepted the mount back and they fully refunded me. So I can't really say whether the HA29 mount is a good strain wave mount or not. It's an expensive mount. It costs over $2,000 and that's not including the tripod, which you must buy separately. And that costs $400. So I have no opinion on the HAE 29 mount. Maybe I just got a defective model or downloaded the iPolar software wrong or it was corrupted. I don't know. I don't want to stare at a computer though for 30 minutes trying to get a green cross here over a red one or whatever it was. I would rather crouch down below the polar scope of an actual polar scope and align. So I don't know whether the HA29 is a good mount or not. I can't verify the weight capacity. After I returned that expensive mount though, I started thinking about it and I realized that it really wasn't important to me personally that the mount be capable of astrophotography. After all, I own an EQ6R Pro mount that is very reliable and very accurate and can hold a lot of weight, I think 44 pounds, and it does a great job on astrophotography needs. So why was I even getting these equatorial mounts that need a counterweight or need to be polar aligned? That's when I started snooping around for a lightweight Altaz mount. And that's when I saw that iOptron had released a strain wave Altaz mount that was very lightweight, and that is the HAZ31. The HAZ31 mount only weighs 8 pounds, and according to iOptron, it can hold up to 31 pounds of payload. It uses the strain wave technology in both RA and DEC, and therefore it does not require any counterweights. The mount costs around 2,000 US dollars and you have to buy the tripod separately and it costs $328. So it's not cheap by any means, but for me, it was like a dream come true 
The mount easily fits into the small case that it comes in, and it comes with a go-to Nova hand controller, uh, so you don't need any kind of electronics to operate the mount. You don't need the polar line, and you don't need a laptop, and incredibly, all you need to do to get started is you enter the date, time, and location information, and you turn it on, and I was incredulous, but it has what iOptron calls level and go technology, where it aligns itself. Yes, I was very skeptical, but after entering my data and turning it on, it went to the first target on its own with no star alignment. It was off a little bit, but it was close. And I used the sunk sync function to get it to adjust the model of the sky it was building. I was scared at first to put my eight inch mead on it, I was terrified it was going to topple over and send my telescope to the ground, but it held the telescope just fine. I had bought this extra mini pier for it that they recommended for heavier telescopes, but I don't like it. You have to attach it with three screws that are loose, and then you have to level it by turning the screws with a hex wrench. And I found attaching a mini pier to be an unnecessary added chore. The mini pier and it didn't really make it that much higher. The mount is only, or the tripod is only capable of extending 48 inches. And I like that the telescope was so low, with my Schmidt Cassegrain anyway. A long refractor would need the mini pier for sure. But for with the Schmidt Cassegrain, without the mini pier, I could comfortably sit in a chair and observe. And I was very happy with that. I had this insane idea to go hiking in the Santa Cruz Mountains, not at Loma Prieta, that's a private site, <laughs> but in the Santa Cruz Mountains with my eight inch Cassegrain, it only weighs 10 pounds. This lightweight tripod and Altaz mount, it weighs eight or nine pounds, a backpack with some accessories and a chair and a battery, adding it all up. It probably weighed 25 pounds. And after a half of a mile, it was very heavy. But what a beautiful evening. I don't think I'll be doing it again because I took an SQM and it was just barely 20, which is not very good. <laughs> but what a nice evening and it was a lot of fun. The mount has a lot of nice features. You can move the saddle to the top of the mount for heavier telescopes, and you can also attach binoculars to it or a telescope. And the saddle can be altered to accept Lasmandi dovetails or Vixen style dovetails. And they got rid of those awful long levers that were slamming into my telescope and they used the knobs instead for tightening the saddle. The mount comes with the GoTo Nova hand controller, which I was already familiar with because it's just like the one that operates my GEM28 mount. But you can control the HAZ31 with the computer as well. I haven't tried that yet. I don't want to look at a computer screen when I'm observing, but using a computer might allow you to locate more accurately. I'm not sure, I can't comment on that. I'm not personally sure why you would want to use a computer with an Altaz mount. For me, I'm happy to have an accurate mount. It only weighs eight pounds and doesn't require counterweights. Also, the mount came with a power cable. And I think electronic mounts should come with a power cable. So I give the HAZ31 mount four stars out of five. I'm not giving it five because it's very expensive, but it is accurate as far as I can tell. It's lightweight and it has a bubble level at the top to help you level it, which is very important for an Altaz mount. And I like it. To assemble the HAS 31 is very simple. You just run the central bolt through the center of the mount head there are no extra screws to potentially lose and once you've screwed that in there it's all assembled except for attaching your telescope and the tripod is very lightweight so that's it 
So in conclusion, the GM28 is also lightweight and accurate in locating and tracking, and I like it except for scratching my telescope. And the price has come down, and that mount is a bargain mount in my opinion for telescopes weighing about 12 to 15 pounds. But if you can afford it, and if weight is a factor for you like it is for me, then you should consider a strain wave mount can't say whether the HA29 is a good mount. I was unhappy with mine and I returned it, but I've seen other reviews that had great things to say about that mount. But if you want another great option in an Altaz mount that's strain wave, I highly recommend the HAZ31 mount. I don't know how it would do for astrophotography. I didn't buy it for that purpose and I haven't used it for that. Uh, for planets, it would be fine, I'm sure. But for visual use, I highly recommend it. They also have a beefier version of this, the HAZ46, which I Optron claims can hold 46 pounds of payload, but take all of these payload claims with a grain of salt. And really, just whatever crazy number the manufacturer asserts, just cut it in half <laughs> to be realistic. I recommend the iOptron GEM28 mount for lightweight telescopes, and if you can afford double the price and want a great Altaz mount, then I highly recommend the iOptron HAZ31 mount as well. And that's all I have to say about the iOptron GEM28, the HA29, and the HAZ31. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever, Sula sided off.